Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke, and on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I'm trying a little bit of uh, Cornell and Deal's Star of the East Flake. Yes, I have finally gotten to trying this blend. It has been requested so many times. I just recorded my first impressions video of this. Uh, spoilers, I'm liking it quite a bit. I'm going to look forward to trying this throughout the rest of this week, and then first impressions video post this Wednesday. The review will post the Wednesday following. So there, you've got that. You can stop sending me emails. I do appreciate people suggesting blends for me to review, and I usually, usually will put it on a wish list or write it down on a piece of paper. I'll check into it later. I don't always... I'm not always interested in the blends that people suggest. They might be something that I just don't think is going to appeal to me. And since I have to purchase all of these blends with my own money, um, I'm not necessarily going to try something that I think I'm not going to like. But this one, I definitely wanted to give a try, and I'm glad I did because I think I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'm smoking it in my Dunhill 1962 Shell Briar. Beautiful billiard. Love this pipe a lot. Um, I am drinking a little bit of Lotus Coffee in this coffee cup from the bagelry in the Bellingham, in the Bellingham, in Bellingham, that's where I live. I'm using my Lamy 2000 pen with an extra fine nib with Pilot Iro Shizuku Tsukyo, Tsukyo in there. I'm writing in my Midori Traveler's Notebook passport size. I am wearing a Seattle Mariners cap with their old, old, old logo from well before my time on a black background, not their colors at all. This is by 47 brand. It's their franchise model. I like these a lot. They're like a fitted, easy fitted, they say. I think they're stopped, they've are stopped. they stopped making these or they're going to stop making hats like this. They seem to be going more towards that new era style with the super high crown and the ridiculously flat brim that I absolutely hate. But let's hope 42nd, 47 brand keeps making these. I like them a lot. I'm wearing my Onion Knight t-shirt uh, that I got from redbubble.com, I think, and my Levi's 511 jeans in size 30, 34. I'm wearing Hanes underwear. They are brief cut because I wear tight pants and I don't like my underwear bunching up. What else? Um, I'm wearing a Bulova uh, Accutron Gemini uh, manual wind watch. Uh, I'm using a, a Bic lighter sometimes. Sometimes I'm using a Peterson pipe lighter. I've got BJ Long pipe cleaners in a, uh, a weird thing that my grandpa brought back from India when he was stationed there during World War II. It's made out of a shell casing of a very large round of ammunition. Not sure what. Uh, using a check tool. And uh, I think that's it. Does that satisfy everybody? Everyone always requests, like, what watch are you wearing? Uh, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm kind of the same way though. If I'm watching a video and I see something, I'm like, what is that? Tell me what that is. And I do always appreciate it when people are doing a video and usually it's if they're discussing, you know, this is a certain, certain gear I'm using or computer equipment. And if they put links, I don't think I'm going to go and put links to all of this stuff. Cause I'm actually, it's kind of tongue in cheek. I'm not really serious about it, but anyway, there you go, gang. Um, a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about today. And there are a lot of ask stuff and things questions to get to. So. I don't know, we're already at like four minutes. This might be a little crazy, might be a little long. I hope it's not too long. Um, first and foremost though, if I open my Midori Traveler's Notebook and take a look at what I have written down for this week. Um, number one, I got my first death threat. Hey! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -boop. Um, I think that's sort of a, a rite of passage for someone on YouTube and especially someone like me who has I don't know, 20 some thousand subscribers. I'm no one, I'm nothing in the YouTube scheme of things. Um, I've gotten, mm, I've gotten a few threats of somebody, of people like trying to come to my town and beat me up or threatening to come to my town and beat me up. Um, a few things like that, but this is the first like actual death threat and it wasn't super blatant. It was more like it was, I don't want to read the email or anything or give this person any oxygen, but it was basically, uh, an email I got to the Stuff and Things account where they were just talking about how much they loathed me and not referring to any particular video or anything that I had said and then basically ended it with how would you feel if or how would you like it if I killed you basically. 
um, was the question, thinly veiled, and I didn't respond or anything, and I'm kind of looking into how should I report this or do what, what I need to do with it. Um, but, I mean, it was very anonymous. But my response to that would be, if your question out there is, how would you feel if I killed you? My response would be, I'd rather you didn't. And I don't think that's a controversial position or stance to hold. I would rather I not be murdered by somebody. And that holds true for all of you out there. Please don't kill me. And I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, next. YouTube is messing with the subscription feed. I've had several messages from several viewers saying that when they go to their subscription feed, which is supposed to be a list of all the channels you're subscribed to, and it's supposed to show all the videos that they have posted in the order that they have been posted, um, some of my videos are not appearing. I've heard other YouTubers talking about this. I think like H3H3 was talking about this. It was kind of the last bastion of of control that you had over your YouTube viewing experience because the feed, the homepage that YouTube shows you is stuff that they want you to see. And it's supposedly geared towards you with an algorithm, like these are things that you might be interested in, but who the hell knows what's going on behind the scenes. But the subscription feed was supposed to be untouched, unaltered. These are the channels you are subscribed to and these are the videos that they have posted. But that doesn't appear to be the case now. I don't know if this is universal. I don't know if this is the kind of thing that YouTube is sort of rolling out incrementally and they're trying it. Um, if you have any, if, if this is something that you are not a fan of, and I'm definitely not a fan of it, I think the only thing we can really do is make our voices heard, maybe tweet at YouTube, um, maybe post comments. I, you can't really get a hold of YouTube, which is an issue. But I think we should probably let them know that we don't like this. And I don't know if they care. Seems like they probably don't. But I'm, I, for one, definitely think that this is not a good idea. And so if you're looking at your feed wondering if I posted a video, it's not necessarily going to tell you if I did or not. The only way to tell is to go to my channel page and look at my uploads. And then you'll know. So it sucks. But that's kind of the way it is. Uh, I've lost my place. Lost my place. Uh, next. Oh, okay, I have, I have written here, uh, video games are here to stay. Now I know that many of you are irritated when I talk about video games, but I mentioned E3 in the last Sunday Smoke. We were kind of in the middle of E3 weekend, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, where many companies, many publishers talk about video games that will be coming soon to you. And I asked if any of you were looking forward to any games in particular, got some cool answers. I was quite interested in Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, the new game from From Software. I have enjoyed the Dark Souls games in the past. Never played Bloodborne because I've never had a PlayStation, but I really like the Dark Souls games. And this does not seem like it's going to be a Souls game or in that genre, but it still looks like a really cool action game, has kind of a ancient Japan samurai ninja aesthetic, looks really good. So I was impressed by that. Also super impressed with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm really looking forward to that on the Switch. Can't wait for that, but that's like not till December, so that's kind of annoying. Um, other things that caught my attention, there are some cool indie games and things like that, but now that you guys have had a chance to see some of the E3 presentations, were there any games that really maybe changed your mind, maybe something that you weren't really interested in, but now that you've seen it, you are more interested, let me know. Um, also, I'm wearing this Onion Knight t-shirt. This is a character from Dark Souls. The reason I wrote down in my book that video games are here to stay is because in the last few days, or even the last week, I guess, I've had so many people, some random strangers and some people who I wouldn't have thought would be into video games have talked to me about video games. Um, I had a neighbor who I've never really spoken to. I always thought he was kind of rude. He just approached me out of nowhere and was like, hey, what do you think of E3? What do you think of these games? And then he commented on the fact that I guess maybe he has seen the channel because he was asking me about Dark Souls and things like that. So that was interesting. Um, a person who was ringing me up at a coffee shop saw this shirt and was like, hey, Dark Souls, and just started talking about Dark Souls for a very long time while other people were waiting in line. Um, I had someone else see me with my Switch. I wasn't even playing it. I just had my case out and they actually recognized the case as a Switch case, which it's not 
obvious that it's a switch case. It's just like a leather case. And they were quite excited to see this and see some of the games. So I showed them a few things. Um, for those of you who are irritated by the fact that video games are a thing in popular culture these days, um, I've got bad news for you. They are going to continue to be a thing. All the people who grew up playing video games, and I am one of those people, we don't view them as a childish pastime. We view them as just another form of entertainment, another form of media to be consumed. And I think, I think we're kind of, the society has grown up with video games and now the people who were children when video games first started becoming popular as home consoles, they're the people who are kind of in control now. And uh, they're more popular than ever. Twitch streams, eSports, it's just gonna keep coming. It's gonna keep coming. So I'm sorry, that's the way it is. Um, and don't worry, we've got lots of smoking, lots of uh, pipe tobacco things that we're gonna talk about in the Sunday Smoke uh, in the Ask Stuff and Things session, section. We already talked a little bit about it at the top of the video. So don't worry, just a little bit of video game stuff. Um, I think those are most of the actual topic topics, and then we have to get to ask stuff and things because there are so many questions, like I mentioned. Remember, if you have a question for me, you can no longer write to me on YouTube because YouTube is removing the messaging functionality for channels. You can't go to a channel, I think starting in July, you won't be able to go to a channel's about page anymore and ask them questions. That's gone. So for me, the best method of contacting me is through Twitter, at SAT Bradley. And if you have a question that you would like me to answer on the Sunday Smoke, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things. I don't know why I have so much trouble with that. The first question is from <clears throat> Jason Hunt at Hexeter. He says, Bradley, how's the water field holding up with your switch lately? I got myself a switch finally and I'm in the market for a good case. Also, do you use a screen protector? And if so, which one? Well, we just mentioned the switch case. I've got it right here. This is my Waterfield City Slicker case. Um, as you can see, it's still holding up quite nicely. It has a few little scrapes and scratches and scars, but I love this thing. This was immersed in coffee once uh, when I had a little accident in my bag, but it's no worse for wear, really. I cleaned it off really well and dried it out. But I love this thing. It works really well. I still use it every single day, and I think it is well worth the price. I got it for free because they sent it to me to review, but even I can't remember how much it is, 80 bucks, something like that. It's not cheap, but I think it's well worth the price. I love it very, very much. Um, and then in terms of screen protector, I do have one on there. I don't know if you can tell, you can see maybe the raised outline of it around the screen. It's one of the um, tempered glass screen protectors and it's held up really well. I can't remember the brand, I wanna say Amfilm. It was on Amazon. It was one of the top sellers for like a screen protector for the Switch and it went on easily. It stayed on. It hasn't peeled up at all. Um, I don't notice any scratches on it or anything. And uh, yeah, I recommend it. I wish I could tell you the exact brand, but I think it was Amfilm. All right, this one is from Eric Rana. He says, oh, English accent, okay. <clears throat> Which kind of English accent? There are very many. I'll just use my... Uh, my, my, my like upper class cartoonish English accent. Here we go. <clears throat> I found very little info regarding the production of Dunhill pipe tobacco by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group. All I have is second hand that says Dunhill production ceased at the end of 2017. What do you know about this? Um, that's basically all I know as well. It is true that production has ceased all the stock that we're still able to get now. And I have noticed that smokingpipes.com says that there is a limit now. You can't buy more than 10 per day of a particular blend, which still doesn't seem like that much of a limit, but the stock is decreasing and it's all just production that was out there when they ceased. So no more is being made. We don't know any more yet as to whether or not another company, perhaps the Scandin Scandinavian Tobacco Group, will keep making the blends, perhaps under a different name, with deeming regulations and all that nonsense that might not be financially viable. So that's all we know. It sucks, and uh, hopefully we'll find out more in the future. This next one is from the Grim Reaper at FirePro 2K15. Hey buddy, thanks for writing in again. He says, now that you've sent your DNA sample and know your lineage, are you concerned that your DNA will be used by governments or nefarious people cloning you? Um, concerned? No. I would actually be delighted if I were cloned. I think that would be awesome because I'm assuming 
You know, these are some of the fantasies that have gone through my mind. I have considered in the past, maybe it would be a good idea to visit every single sperm bank within like a 20 mile radius, donate repeatedly, and then hope that eventually I had an army of progeny that I could somehow have a mental connection to, and in 30 years down the line, summon them all to me, and I would have a massive army of offspring that I could make do my bidding. But a clone would be even better because they would have basically my brain. They would have my DNA. They would be me, but not because obviously, you know, nature versus nurture, all that stuff. But I'm assuming that if I had a mental connection to my offspring, which I'm sure I will, I would assume that my clone, it would be a very super strong mental connection. And if they were to make clones of me, hopefully dozens, hundreds, thousands of clones of me, I could, again, summon them to me, have a giant clone army, and eventually take over the world. Okay, this one is from Hari Hovenen, at Hari is Hovenen. He says, <clears throat> what kind of camera mic system do you use for recording your videos? Thank you for the excellent content. Um, I am using, this, this microphone here, this lav mic is a Rode SmartLav Plus. And I got it originally because it's something that you can actually plug into a smartphone um, because the input, actually you can't plug it into this without a dongle now because it's the iPhone 10. But originally on the smartphones you would have a mic plug in but it also is for headphones as well. And so you can't just plug in a normal microphone to those. You have to have something that's like shielded or whatever for that. Um, so that's why I got this, but it works perfectly well with my cameras also. And I use, you can see this gray tip on it. That's for plugging directly into a smart smartphone. But then I have this adapter, um, which is used to plug into a normal mic input. So that's what I use. Seems to work fine. It's relatively, well, not inexpensive, but fairly reasonably priced for what it is. I think it's around 70, 80 bucks, something like that. Um, and then the camera I'm using is a Panasonic HC VX870, capable of 4K recording. Kind of wish I had just bought an, uh, bought an, I had purchased an SLR, like a Sony or something, um, a single lens reflex digital camera, you know, like a classic looking camera. Um, but I went with this kind of handy cam, I guess that's a Sony branded thing. It's like a little camcorder style camera. It works fine, but you don't have kind of the granular granular control that I sort of wish I had. Um, and you will notice sometimes uh, the lighting seems to change in my videos occasionally where it's trying to keep up with maybe changing lighting conditions. So sometimes I'll seem kind of washed out. The white balance looks sort of weird. So it's not always perfect, but it takes pretty good video and it's not bad. Um, this one is from Milo Sibrant or Cybrant. He says this, in your tobacco review, how do you make the distinction between strength and taste? Have you assigned a blend a low strength but a full taste? Um, this is a question I get occasionally when I'm doing my pipe blend reviews. I have a category for strength and one for taste. I describe taste as flavor, which I guess makes sense, but we can talk about it's kind of a weird fine distinction, but if you think about something like Dunhill Nightcap, which people talk about as being a super strong blend, to me, it is a very flavorful blend. There is a lot of flavor going on, a lot of things that you can taste very distinctly. I don't think of it as super strong though. It's pretty strong, but I think the, the flavor, the taste gets confused with the strength. And for strength, I'm talking about if you've ever had just a really, really stinky cigar, um, where it, it's the mouth feel and the body, it just feels like a super rich, super thick smoke. Um, that's where strength is for me. And I guess it's all kind of amorphous and it all can kind of blend one into another. You can talk about nicotine, you can talk about the flavor, you can talk about the strength. Um, maybe I should just have no, but see, I don't want to. I don't want to separate, or I don't want to combine nicotine and strength because I do think that they're separate. I do think that they're distinct. So this is the best method I have for describing what I'm trying to describe. Some people may not agree that it's the best, but that's kind of where it is. So strength is like the body and the mouth feel, the oomph of the blend, and then the taste is the taste. It's the flavor. Is it very strongly flavored? All right, we have another one. 
man. Okay, we've got ugh, we've got several more. We're gonna try to get through all of them here. This is from Colin at Cagney's Pal. He says this. Scotland defeated England in one day cricket, something fairly unimaginable, unimaginable, as cricket is very much a minority sport here in Scotland. What was the most memorable or enjoyable? Oh, I didn't even, okay, Scotland. Uh, and I'm doing a horrible accent right now, I apologize. What was the most memorable or enjoyable sporting upset you've witnessed? Man, I just totally lost it. Um, sp memorable or enjoyable sporting upset. I don't watch a lot of sports. I think I've talked about that on the channel before. American football is pretty much the only thing I follow at all. Uh, even though I'm wearing a baseball cap, I don't really follow baseball. So the thing that jumps out at me is probably the playoff and the playoff run leading up to the first Super Bowl win that the Seahawks had, and especially the NFC uh, title game where Richard Sherman intercepted the uh, Colin, Kaepernick's, Colin Kaepernick's pass the very end of that game. Um, I, I guess that's not really an upset, but it was a very, very exciting, um, and it wasn't a foregone conclusion that the Seahawks were gonna win that game. And then obviously the Super Bowl, they just crushed the Broncos. But then the following year, when the Seahawks defeated the Packers in the title game, and I know a lot of people were very angry with that because it seemed so improbable. The series of events that occurred, like just, it was one of the most roller coaster ride like experiences I've ever had watching a sporting event. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Okay, we still have a few more. Let's try to get through them here. This is from Dominic. Hey, Dominic, what's going on? Dominic at Sound City 606. He says, and then he says Guten Tag. So it's almost like he wants me to use a German accent, but I've kind of used a German accent. So we're just going to go with Dominic. Hey, your latest tobacco reviews have been of tobaccos that are unavailable in the, e in the EU, sadly. Would you please consider reviewing some tobaccos that are available here, such as Dan Tobacco, MacBaron, Gawith, etc. Next, thanks. Um, yeah, and it's funny because there was a period where I was reviewing, and, and none of this is planned, I assure you, but there was a period where it seemed like I was mostly reviewing European blends, a lot of Dunhills, um, a lot of Mac Barons, a lot of uh, STG blends or blends that STG produced. And I had people writing in and complaining that I wasn't reviewing enough American blends. So it's just kind of cyclical. There's no real rhyme or reason to why I'm picking what blends I'm picking at any given time. But I'm sure that if you just wait a little bit, um, I'll be getting to more European blends. Okay, this is from Cavalry Piper. He says, have you found a replacement for Elizabethan? No, and I don't think I ever will. I just, th there isn't gonna be anything that tastes exactly like it. Other people keep suggesting that I try Sutliff Elizabethan match. Um, and I don't expect to find anything that tastes just like Elizabethan. Mostly I'm just trying to find a blend that I enjoy as much as a daily tobacco. I'm not saying, I, Elizabethan is my favorite pipe blend. I'm not saying it's the best pipe blend. It's just the one that I enjoy smoking on a daily basis. I wouldn't have, um, cheesecake every single day. I really like cheesecake, but I wouldn't eat it every day. And it's the same way with certain pipe blends. Elizabethan is, what do I eat every day? I eat like a chicken breast filet and a salad with like, uh, what is it? I think it's kale and mizuna and chard and baby spinach or something. I eat that a lot, like four or five times a night. That's kind of the way Elizabethan is to me. It's not it's not like the end-all be-all pipe blend, but it's something that I always enjoy. It always hits the spot and uh, it does what I want it to do. It lets me relax. I enjoy it. So no, I haven't found one and I don't know if I ever will. I hope I do. All right, this is from Savage Fat Kid. He says this. Being an anime fan, what do you think of some of the classics? Akira, Ninja Scroll, Sprygun, Ronin Warriors? Um, I've never seen Sprygun or Spriggan. I'm not sure what that is. And Ronin Warriors, I haven't seen. Akira and Ninja Scroll were, they were actually films, not series. I mostly watch series now if I watch anime. They were ones that when I was a kid and anime wasn't as popular in America as it is now, they were sort of like whispered about. It was word of mouth. And this was, this was like, 
oh, have you heard of Ninja Scroll? Have you heard of, have you heard of Akira? And, and there were these movies that like would get passed around VHS, VHS tapes and things like that. And so I definitely watched Akira back then and Ninja Scroll. I haven't seen either of them for years and years and years. I remember enjoying them a lot at the time. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was this kind of very foreign, very almost forbidden sort of thing, especially Ninja Scroll was well, they're both pretty damn violent, but Ninja Scroll was super gory and super violent and had like sexual situations and things. I remember some weird giant ninja beast like sucking a, a whole boob, put a whole boob in his mouth at one point. That was weird. Um, so it was sort of like, ooh, this forbidden kind of tantalizing thing. Um, and I remember having to go to like, like the bad video store to find anime to watch. I think it was like mostly porn in the back, but then in the front they had some anime and some other, I think they had like Robotech and some other stuff stuff there. But so yeah, I enjoyed those. Um, I haven't seen them recently, so I don't know how well they hold up. Things like Vampire Hunter D, stuff like that, um, which were kind of dark and violent and just seemed really of another culture. And that was kind of what appealed to me about those things at the time. But gang, According to my timer, we've been going on for over 26 minutes. So my God, I think it's time to end this Sunday smoke. Many things to look forward to. First and foremost being the Cornell and Deal Star of the East Flake First Impressions video, which we'll be posting this Wednesday. We also will have three Dark Souls remastered videos on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. So check those out as well. Please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter if you want. I hate Twitter, but you know, it serves a purpose at SAT Bradley. And uh, gang, check your subscription feed, or don't check your subscription feed because it doesn't work anymore. Check my video page. Maybe you should, you should bookmark my, I guess, just my home page on YouTube and my upload page, and you can see if I've been posting new videos. I always am at least two a week on this channel, sometimes more, and at least three a week on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. So until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the end of the stuff and things on his smoke. I'll see you later. It's very hot. I'm kind of sweating. Ugh. Not enjoying that.